Hello everybody, Caffeinix here. I am here today with an interesting auto furnace concept. Uh, it was adapted from uh, something posted on Gaming Stack Exchange by Johan, uh, who apparently got the original idea from Daedalus822. Um, I have adapted his adaptation, uh, and let me start with a demo. Get some iron ore here. Stick it in this chest. And you can see we have distributed one ore to every one of these furnaces. Now that was obviously a bit of a waste, because uh, I had a full piece of coal in there. Uh, but it works just as well if I take a whole stack, drop it in there. So you can see we are getting one piece of iron ore every time, well, every every mysterious cycle, which I'll explain in a moment. And the uh, the amount in each furnace is always equal. Now, um, a little bit of background. So feel free to skip this part if you don't care and just want to see how to make it. I'll get to that in a second. Um, the furnace design that Johan posted on the forums looks like this. It's a little bit more involved. Um, he has a comparator. So he has two rows of hoppers. Two for every, well, actually three hoppers for every chest, or for every furnace. Um, the top row of hoppers is hooked up to a comparator. The comparator is inverted, and then its output is fed down into these blocks, which uh, disable. Um, remember, when redstone is on next to a hopper, it disables the hopper. It disables these four hoppers. Uh, I've just done four here for a demonstration, but you could extend this. Um, so the idea is you put ore or whatever in here. Um, it fills these hoppers, but these hoppers do not suck the ore out of these hoppers because they're disabled. So the ores propagate down, and every, every four ticks, it turns out, um, the ore will move one block over. And so, in the first tick, all the ore is in the chest. The second tick, one piece of ore is here, and the rest is in the chest. Uh, sorry, second of four ticks. So, fourth tick. Eighth tick, uh, there's one ore here, one ore here, and the rest is in the chest, and so on. Eventually, it reaches the end. When it reaches the end, this comparator starts outputting a signal, which causes this torch to invert a true instead of false which causes this redstone to turn off, which causes these hoppers to become enabled. And so, very briefly, all of the ore, of which there should only be one in every one of these hoppers, is sucked down into these hoppers, thereby clearing this hopper, clearing this comparator, shutting these hoppers off so it can only do that once. Then these hoppers dispense into these chests, half of which are trapped chests so they can sit next to each other. Uh, these chests act as a buffer because the original design, if you added more than about one stack worth of objects to the chest at a time, uh, more than one item would get uh, stuck in one of these hoppers, um, which would cause it never to re-disable. Uh, so it would just flood items down into the first chest it found. Um, then these, of course, feed from the chests into the furnaces, and ideally you get a proper distribution. What I found, though, is that uh, because there is no reset, there's no way for the um, for the the whole assembly line to know that it is done. Uh, the last item never actually gets down to the furnaces. It stays up in. Uh, these hoppers because they are disabled because on the very last tick this one dispenses to this one and is then empty and shuts off these hoppers again and so you get one piece of ore in each of these hoppers that doesn't get flushed down into the furnaces until the next time you um, 
forge something or smelt something. Which is okay unless that happens to be a different thing next time, because then the very first thing your furnace receives is a different type of ore than all of the rest of them, so it plugs at the output slot. So you absolutely must have hoppers um, down below the chest to take the output slot and put it somewhere, otherwise your chest will back up immediately. So this is a grand total of four hoppers, mandatory, for every single furnace. I think we could do better, so let's try. This is the version of the previous uh, assembly that you saw over here at the very beginning, with all of the redstone workings exposed. You can see there's not much to it. This is a simple pulse clock. The number of repeaters in this clock must be equal to the number of furnaces, and they all must be on four ticks. You may recall my mentioning four ticks earlier. This is the delay for each hopper. So number of hoppers equals number of furnaces, number of repeaters equals number of hoppers. Isn't that right, Piggy? That's right. Okay. This feeds into a one-tick pulse limiter. The reason for this is because, as you can see, this is flashing on and off at the right frequency to disable the uh, hoppers, but it would enable them for long enough that more than one item could fall through at a time. So to prevent that, we limit it to one tick where it is off. And then we just feed it in the exact same way um, that Johan did into this line of uh, solid blocks, which are now disabling these hoppers. Now, the benefit here is that because there is no feedback loop, it's all unidirectional, there is no way for things to get stuck, um, because this will cycle once every, in this case, 16 ticks, no matter what, whether there's anything in it or not. So if I put something in here, uh, it will dispense to these four hoppers, and then the next time that redstone turns off for a blink, it will dispense down to these four hoppers, and then it'll end up in these chests, or in these furnaces. I keep saying chests. I mean furnace. You know what I mean. Um, now, you might be asking yourself, if you're paying very careful attention, why isn't it that if you catch this in the middle of a cycle, it you would expect that it would, uh, if it has only had a chance, let's say, to propagate this far, so it's only been four ticks, uh, and then due to, you know, whatever phase the, the redstone happens to be in, uh, it just turns out that that is when the pulse happens. You'd expect to get two in this hopper and this hopper, and then it'll start filling from the chest again, get all four, and then get all four again. And so you'd expect these two chests to end up with one more piece of ore over the course of the smelt. That doesn't happen. And I don't know why. If you know why, please comment, because I would be very interested to see why it is that this isn't a problem, because I expected it to be as well. Uh, but it's not. I've tried this six or seven times, and I have never had that happen. It just always seems to work out in the end somehow or another. Okay, so let's talk about each of these and how to build them. Um, most of these come straight from the wiki, so we uh, set the time today here so we can see it clearly. Um, so if you're having trouble building any of them, take a look at the wiki, but just very simply, um, a pulse clock is just a bunch of repeaters. I'll make an 8 clock, or I guess a 32 clock, so you can see how it scales up. So the only trick is you need to make sure that the repeaters are facing opposite directions, and all of them need to be all the way open, four ticks each. Then you simply connect it in a loop like this, and then grab yourself a redstone torch, and just place it and remove it. And now you have a clock. Okay, so that's how you do that. And then for the um, pulse limiter, it's just a repeater powering a solid block with a torch on the side, and then you have a loop. So one piece of redstone being powered directly by this block, and another piece being powered by this torch. The uh, delay through a redstone torch is one tick, and so uh, it's kind of an ore uh, gate here, but it's one tick delayed. So it will very briefly turn off and then turn back on again. Then you just bring this up here, and you have your, your device. Um, so 
this I like this design for a lot of reasons. The biggest reason I like it is because it only requires two hoppers for every furnace. And so if you are a, a Steve of modest means or an Alex of modest means, uh, you don't need to worry about you know blowing the bank on every single one of these so you can have a full bank of eight, which is really nice because this means that you can <clears throat> this means that you can simply drop a full stack in here and expect it to distribute equally, especially if you have preloaded your chests with, say, eight pieces of coal. Um, the other nice thing about it is that it's completely silent. Uh, I've seen other designs that use a uh, hopper minecart up here to distribute the ore, and that's great, and that probably works just fine, uh, but then you have to deal with the fact that you have these minecart noises everywhere. Um, and this is also pretty compact. As you see, there is, you know, a bit of redstone involved, but you can easily hide that behind, uh, and it, it only is about as wide as a bank of eight, uh, chests. So you can very easily just stick that in a wall. You could even put this in a, a lower floor and just feed this redstone up. It's pretty easy and pretty simple. Pretty simple both to make and to understand, I think. But let's say that you are not a Steve or Alex of modest means. Let's say that you have a golem farm, and you're looking for an excuse to use it, and you have more iron than sense. What should you do? Well, money bags, have I got a contraption for you. This is the same thing as before, except it is fully automatic. This requires, I believe, six, yes, yeah, six pistons per chest. Um, pistons, listen to me. Hoppers, six hoppers, maybe seven hoppers, lots of hoppers per chest. You don't care, you've got an iron farm. Anyway, uh, this is the same design as before, but in this case we have doubled up um, this line. Now it's also powering um, this row of hoppers, uh, which is dispensing into this row of hoppers, which dispenses into the side of the chest. Uh, as you may know, a hopper dispensing to the side of a chest provides fuel. And you can't really see it, but under here we also have hoppers delivering the output to this chest over here. So this is completely fire and forget. We can we can just do this, and you're rich, right? You've got diamond ore all over the place. Simply load your coal in here, load your diamond ore in here, wait for it all to light up. There we go, and then, well, you can see I did a little bit off camera, but within a few seconds, look at that, isn't that beautiful? And that'll just keep going. Every few seconds you'll get a pulse of eight diamonds, just like that. So that's about all I have to show you. If you have any questions, uh, comments, if you know why it works, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.